Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about AP psychology and all things related to psychology. This is actually the last set of notes in our social psych unit. So make sure that you check out the link below and grab the paper notes that I've made for you to kind of follow along. That's available in my Teachers Pay Teachers store and we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to talk about with the social and cultural impact on the self is this idea of the self. And actually there are quite a few self words that if you catch in some earlier videos that I've done, we talk about mostly with humanism and the humanistic perspective, but we don't really have, we can kind of set the whole humanistic perspective aside for now in order to focus on the social psychology aspect of the self. And the first thing that we really need to consider is this idea of self-concept. Self-concept is an individual self sense of self in regards to society and personal norms, and that it's your understanding of who you are in regards to society and what society expects of you. And that's the norms part. So when creating our self-concept, we compare ourselves to the norms of society. So an example is when a girl calls herself a tomboy, right? And you might say, oh, well, there's no harm in that. Well, you have to think of the reasoning behind it. It has to do with her self-concept because she likes things that most other boys in her life like, right? So what she's doing is comparing herself to the norms that she sees in society, which is that boys normally like sports and playing outside. And so does she. So that must make her a tomboy. This is a playoff of, like we've said, social norms, society's standards of behavior. So the example being boys like sports, girls like dolls, right? That's a, a, an expectation, a norm that we see, a tendency. Well, girls wear pink and behave ladylike, right? Whereas boys bottle their emotions but can explode in anger and aggression and that's just boys being boys, right? Not that the, I think that's acceptable, but that's very much what society has set out as being what it's like to be a girl and what it's like to be a boy. And then you compare yourself to that. And then if you're a girl who explodes in anger and aggression, you're not being very ladylike, whereas that will never be said to a boy. You're not being very ladylike, right? Like you're not being very kind and nice. It's, oh, get those emotions out. So shaping our self-concept is, again, when we compare ourselves to the norms of society and use them to shape our self-concept. And I want you to take a second to reflect on this question. How could self-concept vary between individualistic and collectivist cultures? And I hope that you first recognize that the norms are very different in these two types of cultures. The norms in an individualistic culture are very much self-centered, right? Centered on the individual, what their goals are. And so if you aren't someone who has a lot of ambitious goals for yourself, you are breaking those societal norms. Whereas in a collectivist culture, if you have lots of personal goals and you want to leave home rather quickly and start anew and like start a big company that has nothing to do with what your family does, that would be honored, right? And highly regarded in an individualistic culture, but not in a collectivist one. We have a huge piece of research that you have to know about in shaping self-concept, and that is Kenneth Clark's doll test. It was actually he and his wife, so it's both of the Clarks. So this was around the time of the Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court case, and psychologist Kenneth Clark and his wife conducted an experiment to find the effects of segregation on black children. So what he was asking was with Plessy versus Ferguson, did the whole separate but equal norm of society, hence why it's involved here, impact the way black children viewed themselves? So what they did, and I have a video um, on the next slide that I highly encourage you to find these slides on my Teachers Pay Teachers store linked below. Um, but so what they did was they had a child sitting at a table, much like this, you would say, and had two dolls that looked the same in every aspect except their skin color. One was black, one was white, and asked them questions like, which doll is good? Which doll is nice? Which doll is bad? which doll um, does makes bad choices or is mean, right? And then at the end asked, which doll 
is most like you. And they always pointed to the black doll, which is also the one that they said was bad and not nice. So I highly encourage you to watch that video because it really just pulls on your heartstrings about a part of the United States history, um, which also kind of adds a layer of despair. Um, but you really should watch it in regards to how society, societal norms, shape self-concept. The Clarks concluded that prejudice, discrimination, and segregation, that's the big one, caused black children to develop a sense of inferiority and even self-hatred. So I have to ask, how are societal factors influencing the children's self-concept? Because separate was not equal, right? And they always noticed that, wow, we have the crappy side of this whole separate but equal thing, so that must say something about me. And uh, you know, you might be thinking, well, no, don't do that. Don't automatically just think you're awful because everything in your life is telling you to. But have you ever heard that if you hear a lie enough, you're going to believe it? And can't that be true about self-talk, especially if society is influencing your self-talk to be more negative and that you're going to believe the negative self-talk the more you say it? Just something, something to think about. So this is like the image of the YouTube video. I highly encourage you to get on and just search Kenneth Clark's doll test. Um, and it's kind of like a reenactment of that that some students did. Some other factors that are super important are stereotype threat. I find this stuff to be so intriguing because it really can influence almost everyone. It's a self-confirming concern that one, meaning yourself, will be evaluated based off of a negative stereotype. So if you think back to the blue eye, brown eye experiment, hopefully you have watched that. Um, when the children are reading their flashcard times in different groups, when they are in the inferior group, they are thinking to themselves, wow, I'm going to fulfill the stereotype, right? I'm going to confirm that stereotype that I am not smart. And they're thinking so much about that that they actually confirm the stereotype. Another example, a stereotype is that women or girls can't drive. So let's say that a girl is taking her driver's test and it's a man who is her um, evaluator, right? And she's thinking to herself as she's driving, as she's in the test, oh my gosh, he's going to think I'm so bad just because I'm a girl. And she's thinking so much about that that she actually does make mistakes and succumbs to the threat of the stereotype that she perceives being present. Self-fulfilling prophecy is slightly different because whereas stereotype threat is all just in your own head and your perception of what other people think of you based off of stereotypes, self-fulfilling prophecy is very much about other people's behavior. So it's a belief that leads to its own fulfillment because of someone else's actions towards you. So an example here, basketball coach doesn't think that freshmen are good players. So he never plays the freshman, right? So the stereotype or the um, prophecy, you could say, is that freshmen aren't good. So he, because of that, he behaves a certain way. He makes a certain choice, which is to never play freshman. So when he eventually plays the freshman, guess what? He's no good because he never plays, which is a direct result of the coach's behavior. Therefore, that fulfills the coach's assumption that freshmen aren't good, right? So it's someone else's assumption about a group and because, and they make decisions based off of that assumption that ends up fulfilling their own prophecy. So the social and cultural groups of other people lead us to treat them a certain way. So this can cause a destructive cycle, right? Like, you know how conflict works. It's not a positive thing. But we've talked in a previous video about social traps, um, where situations when we pursue our personal interests at the cost of our collective well-being, right? Those social dilemmas, that's totally there. But then there's also distorted perceptions. And I want you to think about this one, mirror image perceptions. And I want you to think about this, like think of a recent conflict you've had with someone and all the bad mouthing you probably did on that person. As we see our enemy, the person we have conflict with, as untrustworthy or even evil intention, they're awful, right? Well, 
they're saying the same exact things about us. And I don't tell you that so that you get all triggered and angry again, but I say that to you to say, it doesn't really matter what happened or who did what. You both see each other the same way. So how about we really do take a step to be the bigger person and recognize, you know what? It's just a conflict. It's a disagreement. Maybe we should just disagree, agree to disagree. And then there's that self-fulfilling prophecy part. Again, we behave towards others in ways that influence them to behave in ways that justify or confirm our beliefs. So if we say that Sally is not nice, we then treat her a certain way because we think she's not nice. And in turn, she's then not nice to us. So this doesn't bode well in conflict because if, if you have that assumption, you're going to act a certain way to, to make them then fulfill your prophecy about them. So that wraps up our last set of notes for the social psychology unit. So if you didn't catch anything or didn't see one of the previous videos, make sure that you go back and do that. I would also absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my new YouTube channel. I'll be uploading more and more videos. Everybody have a great day and good luck on the end of the assessment um, for this unit.